Hello friends, let me start with an overall summary of physics of electronic materials at different levels. The simplest theory ignores electron ion and electron electron interaction. Ignoring electron ion interaction is known as the free electron gas model and ignoring electron electron interaction is known as the independent electron gas model. Electron gas model can be solved using a classical as well as quantum theory. Classical electron gas model was proposed by Drude and quantum electron gas model was proposed by Sommerfeld. Electron gas models provide good explanation for most of the electronic properties of metals other than a few like anomalous Hall coefficient for certain metals. At the next level, we remove the free electron approximation by including the electron ion interaction. However, we continue with independent electron approximation that is we ignore electron electron interaction. Balance electrons are assumed to get detached from the atomic cores consisting of nucleus and core electrons. Thus, atomic cores are positively charged ions and the valence electrons find themselves in a potential provided by the positively charged ions. In a crystalline solid, ions are arranged periodically in a lattice. Thus, we solve a problem of electrons in a periodic potential such electrons are known as block electrons. The modification needed to go from free electron to electron in a periodic potential turns out to be very simple. In case of free electrons, the eigen function is given by a plane wave. In case of block electrons, the eigen function is a plane wave times some function which has the periodicity of the lattice. Let me quote the words of Bloch himself. I found to my delight that the wave differed from the plane wave of free electrons only by a periodic modulation. If the potential is weak, we call it a nearly free electron model. The band structure or E versus K diagram of Nearly free electrons differ from the actual free electrons only in a region close to the Brillouin zone boundary. In this figure, the free electron band structure is shown by the dotted line and same here. Note that the free electron and the nearly free electron band structure which is shown by the solid line differ only near the Brillouin zone boundary. Otherwise, away from the Brillouin zone boundary, free and nearly free electrons have identical features. Nearly free electron model is not just a toy model. It indeed works for metals like aluminum. The first diagram from the left shows the free electron band structure in a face centered cubic lattice. The second diagram shows the actual band structure of aluminum generated via ab initio calculations using quantum espresso package. Notice the close match between the free electron and actual band structure. Indeed, the periodic potential has some effect, but the effect is not too strong. And the match between the free electron and actual band structure is clearly visible. It looks like that we completely understand the electronic band structure of metals based on what we have done so far. But wait a minute. We know that if we have a partially filled band, then only electrons can take part in transport process. A completely full or completely empty band cannot take part 
in electronic transport. This explains the metallic nature of lithium having electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s1. Since the 2s band is half filled, lithium has to be a metal. This also explains the metallic nature of sodium, which has a half filled 3s band, copper and potassium, which has a half filled 4s band, silver, which has a half filled 5s band, and gold, which has a half filled 6s band. According to this argument, beryllium having electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2 should be an insulator. Similarly, all the divalent elements like magnesium, calcium, strontium should be insulators. But these are known as alkaline earth metals. How do they show metallic nature despite having no partially filled bands? Clearly, what we have done so far is not sufficient to explain the metallic nature of divalent metals like beryllium, magnesium, calcium, and strontium. We need to learn one more important concept to explain the existence of divalent metals, the Fermi surface. Later, the same concept will also help us to understand electronic transport properties of metals. Concept of Fermi surface is so important in a metal that a metal is defined as a solid having a Fermi surface. Before discussing about Fermi surface, we need to have a very good understanding of reciprocal lattice and preloading So, Showing every detail in 3D would be very challenging. Thus, I do it for a 2D square lattice. A square lattice has two lattice translation vectors. E1 equal to A exact and A2 equal to A y hat. It is easy to find the corresponding translation vectors in reciprocal lattice given by B1 equal to 2 pi by A exact and B2 equal to 2 pi by A y hat. It is left as an exercise for you to verify that ai dot bj is equals to 2 pi delta of ij. Center of the reciprocal space is the gamma point. Let us start to mark other lattice points in reciprocal space. Starting from the origin, we reach the first point at 2 pi by a 0. There are total 4 points located at the distance of 2 pi by a from the origin and the other points are here at 0, 2 pi by a. Next one, minus 2 pi by a, 0. And the fourth one is 0 minus 2 pi by a. These are the first near neighbors to the gamma point. Now let us find the second near neighbors to the gamma point. So these blue points are the 
second near neighbor to the comma point and their coordinates are 2 pi by a 2 pi by a minus 2 pi by a 2 pi by a minus 2 pi by a minus 2 pi by a and 2 pi by a minus 2 pi by a. Now let us find the third nearest neighbor to the gamma point. These green points are third nearest neighbor to the gamma point and they are Coordinates are given by 4 pi by a 0, 0, 4 pi by a minus 4 pi by a 0 and 0 minus 4 pi by a. Finally, let us find the fourth nearest neighbor to the comma point. This magenta points are the fourth nearest neighbors to the comma point. And there are eight such points. Coordinates are 4 pi by a, 2 pi by a, 2 pi by a, 4 pi by a minus 2 pi by a 4 pi by a minus 4 pi by a 2 pi by a minus 4 pi by a minus 2 pi by a minus 2 pi by a minus 4 pi by a two pi by a minus 4 pi by a and 4 pi by a minus 2 pi by a. Now, let me show you how to draw brillouin zones for a square lattice. First step is to draw the bag plates. In order to do that, I join the gamma point with its first near neighbor. And then draw the perpendicular bisector. Join the first near neighbor with the gamma point, we get a line and we draw the perpendicular bisector of the line. Join the gamma point with first near neighbor, we get a line and we draw the perpendicular bisector of the line. Join gamma point with the first near neighbor, we get a line and we draw the perpendicular bisector of this line. Now we have four Bragg planes corresponding to the first near neighbor. Next, we join the gamma point with the second near neighbor. We get a line and we draw its perpendicular bisector. We join gamma point and its second near neighbor get a line and we draw its perpendicular bisector. We join comma point with its second near neighbor, get a line and draw its perpendicular bisector. Join gamma point with its second near neighbor, get a line and draw its perpendicular bisector. Now we have 
four black planes marked in blue corresponding to the second near neighbor then we join gamma point with its third near neighbor we get a line we draw its perpendicular bisector join gamma point with its third near neighbor get a line and draw its perpendicular bisector join gamma point with the third near neighbor get a line and draw its perpendicular bisector join gamma point with the third near neighbor get a line and draw its perpendicular bisector now we have four black planes marked in green corresponding to the third near neighbor next we join gamma point with the fourth near neighbor we get a line and we draw its perpendicular bisector join gamma point with the fourth near neighbor we get a line and draw its perpendicular bisector again we draw a line joining gamma point with the fourth near neighbor and draw its perpendicular bisector join gamma point with its fourth near neighbor get a line draw its perpendicular bisector join gamma point with fourth near neighbor get a line draw its perpendicular bisector join gamma point with fourth near neighbor get a line and draw its perpendicular bisector join gamma point with fourth near neighbor get a line draw its perpendicular bisector join gamma point with fourth near neighbor get a line and draw its perpendicular bisector thus we have eight black planes corresponding to the fourth near neighbor i have shown how to draw the black planes for a square lattice now let me illustrate how to get the billowing zones of a square lattice imagine that i start from the gamma point let me find out the regions where I can go without crossing a single black plane. Clearly, this is the region where I can go without crossing a single black plane. This is known as the first billowing zone. Step 3. Let me mark the regions which can be reached from the gamma point by crossing one black plane. This region can be reached from the gamma point by crossing one black plane marked in red. Similarly, this region can be reached from the gamma point by crossing one black plane marked in red. In total, we have four such regions which can be reached from the gamma point by crossing a single black plane marked in red. The blue shaded regions constitute the second billowing zone. Step four, let me mark the regions which can be reached from the gamma point by crossing two black planes. These two regions can be reached from the gamma point by crossing a red black plane and a blue 
brac plane. Similarly, these two regions can be reached from the gamma point by crossing a red brac plane and a blue brac plane. In total, there are eight such regions which can be reached from the gamma point by crossing a red black plane and a blue black plane. The green shaded regions constitute the third billowing zone. Step five, I have to mark the regions which can be reached from the gamma point by crossing three black planes. Take this region. This region can be reached from the gamma point by crossing two red planes and one blue plane. Now take this small region. This region can be reached from the gamma point by crossing one red, one blue and one green plane. Similarly, take this small region. This also can be reached from the gamma point by crossing a red plane, a blue plane and a green plane. Let us mark all the regions which can be reached from the gamma point by crossing three brack planes. These regions shaded in magenta can be reached from the gamma point by crossing three black planes. These regions constitute the fourth brillouin zone. In summary, first brillouin zone is the region which can be reached from the gamma point without crossing a single black plane. The second brillouin zone is the region which can be reached from the gamma point by crossing only one black plane. It is shaded in blue. To reach this blue region from the gamma point, we just need to cross one black plane. Third brillouin zone is the region which can be reached from the gamma point by crossing two black planes. It is shaded in green. For example, if you want to reach this region starting from the gamma point, you have to cross one red black plane and one blue black plane. Fourth brillouin zone is the region which can be reached from the gamma point by crossing three black planes. It is shaded in magenta. For example, if you want to reach this region starting from the gamma point, you have to cross two red black planes and one blue black plane. Similarly, if you want to reach this region starting from the gamma point, you have to cross one red black plane, one blue black plane and one green black plane. This is an enlarged view showing the first brillouin zone in red, second brillouin zone in blue, third brillouin zone in green and fourth brillouin zone in magenta. Let me show you that we can map all the brillouin zones to the first brillouin zone. For example, we take this portion of the second brillouin zone and we bring it back to the first brillouin zone. Similarly, we take this portion and bring it back to the first brillouin zone. We take 
this portion of the second breloin zone and bring it back to the first breloin zone. We take this portion of the second breloin zone and bring it back to the first breloin zone. Similarly, we can do it for the third breloin zone. We take this portion of the third breloin zone and bring it back to the first breloin zone. We take this portion and bring it back to the first breloin zone. We take this portion and bring it back to the first breloin zone. We take this portion of the third breloin zone and bring it back to the first breloin zone. We take this portion and bring it back to the first breloin zone. We take this portion of third breloin zone and bring it back to the first breloin zone. And we take this portion of the third breloin zone and bring it back to the first breloin zone. And finally, we take this portion of the third breloin zone and bring it back to the first breloin zone. Thus, we have mapped second and third breloin zone to the first breloin zone in a reduced zone scheme. Since every breloin zone perfectly fits in the first breloin zone, we can conclude that each breloin zone has same area. We have finished our discussion on breloin zones of a square lattice. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss about drawing Fermi surface in two dimension. Thank you.